Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about digital servos and more specifically why you should be using them in your applications. I got five reasons to hit you up with and the very first one is going to be one that essentially is going to be covered in more detail in another video and I'm actually going to end off with one that I think is probably the most important and relevant to us. Now the, these are in otherwise no particular order, so keep that in mind as we're going through. Let's start off with the very first one, which is essentially dealing with that higher precision and faster response time of digital servos. Digital servos essentially process signals much quicker than analog servos, where typically an analog servo is gonna have a signal around 50 hertz. This is the signal that comes from your receiver and goes to that specific servo. Now, digital servos are typically going to be around 300 hertz or even more possibly. We're gonna get deeper into details around these frequencies and how this all comes together in a future video. What we need to know here for this particular video. This allows for finer control and better positioning as it relates to digital servos and the requested position that you are making with your radio. Digital servos are going to respond more quickly to the control input that you are putting into that radio. This makes digital servos quite powerful to those especially when you require that precise control, that level of fine detail within your response and your control over your radio control vehicle. For most people this is probably not going to be a significant reason to move into a digital servo but hold that thought right there because there are better and more powerful reasons why you should be using digital servos our second one goes on to stronger holding power Digital servos can maintain a more consistent position as a load is applied. And this is very important to many of us that use servos to steer a radio controlled vehicle. That's by far probably the number one reason why you'd want to use a digital servo is because you appreciate being able to steer your radio controlled vehicle in the correct direction. Once a load is starting to be applied to that digital servo, you're going to have a lot more pulses that go to the actual servo motor from the control board in the servo. Essentially, if you take a digital servo and you try to rotate from its position one degree off of center, you're gonna experience a lot of torque from that servo trying to position that back down to zero degrees. Right now it's trying to keep centered so that it does not change its position. We push it and right away we can feel some motion. There's movement there and it's very easy for me to push it, relatively speaking, and twist it out of position. If we grab the servo arm, we try and give it quite the amount of torque right away, it does not budge. It's almost like it's locked solid on position. You can see as I apply more and more force, it holds it no problem. And if you were to get an analog servo, it's not going to be the same exact thing here. You're going to get less torque. You have to actually move that servo arm on an analog servo much further than just a degree out in order to get the full amount of power to rotate that arm back down to that zero degree mark. This is why digital servos are so good for precise positioning and why you need them for your steering application. Now what's important here is a digital servo, even if you operate it on the same 50 hertz input signal as an analog servo, you're still going to get this type of performance. That's why I said it's not so critical when we covered that first point. The biggest thing on a digital servo is not necessarily the input section of the control that you're giving that servo, but it's actually the output to the electric motor inside that servo. That electric motor is going to get a lot more pulses, PWM frequency is going to be a lot higher in that digital servo allowing for this better control over the position that we're actually requesting. This is essentially what gives us that stronger holding power when we are requesting a position and forces on a radio control vehicle are trying to move it away. Now this kind of ties into the next one where a digital servo is actually able to apply a lot of torque at all different positions within the servo range. A digital servo is going to be able to apply full torque even if you try to move that servo off of axes, off of that position that you are requesting. We did talk about this in the previous point that we made and it ultimately comes down to having less dead spots in the pulses that are sent to the electric motor within a servo. This is very important especially if you've requested a specific position. Let's say it's at the very end of that servo range and you want to hold that position. A digital servo is going to perform better in all kinds of different holding patterns whether you're trying to hold the center or like what we're trying to talk about in this point meaning all the different ranges of degrees of freedom for that servo within its specified range. 
Number four here on our list is smoother operation. Digital servos are going to operate with less jitter and make smoother transitions. This is essentially because of their ability to make fine adjustments. And again, we talked about this earlier where the fine adjustments come because the PWM frequency being sent to the motor within the servo is going to be a lot higher than an analog servo. This makes up for a lot of the points that we're actually talking about here. And you can see the true benefit to a digital servo is actually the circuit that goes from the circuit board all the way to the electric motor. That's where we're seeing the biggest benefit here in our digital servo. Now let's talk about the last and final item on our list and that deals with cost. This is by far the best one here in my opinion as to why you should be placed your order for a digital servo rather than an analog servo, especially if you're on the borderline and you don't know exactly which one you should select. Most applications, a digital servo is going to be better for you. In fact, I don't know too many applications at this point where I would actually use an analog servo over a digital servo. When it comes to the cost of a digital servo, digital servos are really closing the gap of the price point between digital and analog. This makes it even more of a bigger reason and easier for you to get into the market for digital servos over analog. And especially if you are trying to steer a radio control vehicle, steering for a radio control car or your elevator ailerons rudder within your radio controlled airplane. Now more recently I found myself looking for more servos for my radio control vehicles and swapping out some of the old ones that I've had for 12 years or so and some of those have been analog and of course what I've done is looked at what's on the market these days and the market has expanded. There's a lot more competition out there helping to drive those price points down and these days you can get a digital servo with a ton of torque capabilities and even a little bit of a faster servo at a sacrifice of some torque if you're willing to do that out of them. With digital servos selling at this low of a price, it just makes it accessible for all hobbyists to be able to go and grab one of these high performance servos for their specific application. Another thing you might consider is taking the servos out of your ready to run vehicle and swapping them out for a good high quality digital servo that's available on the market for very competitive prices. Let me know in the comment section below if you are using digital servos for every application that you can possibly squeeze one of these units into. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.